relapse, you know, just, just speaking to guys that are, you know, that are, you know, maybe in your program and in, in mine or, or doing this, you know, by following our content or, and are building their own tribe around them. You know, if, if you struggle and relapse, you know, in the first 30 days, what happens? How, how does it impact you? You go back to day one. Then if you're six months, you know, free, then you have a slip and relapse. You got to go all the way back, back to day one. So you can just, you know, talk on, on, on relapsing. How does it impact? And, and then yeah. where can guys kind of navigate it from? Definitely. And before I forget to talk about this, I'll, I'll talk about relapse in general, going back to that commitment that we talked about. When we talk about slips and relapses, some people never make the mental commitment and they can, you can dopamine release without anything. So mm. abstaining is one thing. So self-awareness is huge. And that commitment up front is the number one factor that will make you successful because and it doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm, I'm going to talk about that neuroscientifically. It does not have to be a perfect journey. What is right. But when you're committed and you can start building self-awareness and you can start realizing when you're giving your brain what it used to need in the dopamine releases at higher levels, that is what we are changing. So we have to change the behaviors, whatever they might be, that is giving your brain that massive amount of neurochemicals. So some people change their behaviors, but actually they're really not changing their brain too much. And that's the concept in alcoholism of a dry drunk. You can mm. not have, you, you could abstain from drinking for years and years and years, but your brain hasn't changed at all. It's craving alcohol. You're just doing a great job at abstaining. Actually that taxes the nervous system significantly over time. And what yeah. it does is it creates an anxiety brain pattern in there. So you can abstain, but you're basically spinning your electrical, you know, magnetic wheels twice, three, four times harder than you need to, just keeping that habit at bay. Yeah. Now, the way to, to come out of the habit is to, like we've already said, change the system, change the behaviors and the thoughts. But if you have a slip, there's a difference between a slip and a relapse. A slip is a one-time, you slip backwards just a tiny bit. So like if you have been, you know, abstaining for two weeks and then two weeks later, you take a little slip back. The key is to learn from that slip, deconstruct it. What got you there? Yep. What, what was sleuthy about it? Cause something sleuthy happened. Something tricked you into doing it again. Like literally that's the truth. That's the slippery slope. So something has to be changed. If you don't change another thing, you're likely to slip again. The more times you slip, it leads to a full relapse, which is you're just back into your habit the way that it was before, whatever it looked like. So slips can be really, really powerful. It shows you where the holes are in your program and your plan. Mm. So when you set the intention to come out of this habit, there needs to be a plan. It can't just be, I'm not going to do this anymore. It has to be, I'm not going to do this anymore. And I'm going to put my phone over in the bathroom when I go to sleep. I'm going to not go down into my man cave after 10 PM. I'm going to turn my computers around at work. So they're visible to other people. Like that's a plan. Then if you have a slip and it's like, Oh, uh, you know, I, I didn't realize my lunchtime it's an hour long and I eat in 15 minutes, which gets me 45 minutes of sitting around in my car by myself. I didn't realize that was a, a yellow zone or a red zone that was going to lead mm -hmm. me to a slip. Now I realize it because I just had a slip and now I'm only taking 15 minutes for lunch and then I'm going for a run or, you know, finding the holes, plugging the holes and moving forward. That has, that can have huge power for people. And no, it doesn't move your brain back to day one. It moves your brain back to, you know, day 13. And if you learn from it, you can move your brain far ahead in your recovery journey. It's faster because it's actually going to build a better, a better plan. That's not going to be able to be penetrated. I love, love that. I mean, just. Yeah. Just so if someone has multiple slips, there's a problem with your program. You know, it's like, it's like a football team. If, if defense keeps letting the other offense through defense has a problem. That's why I always say the best plan is a strong offense but you need to have a defense plan to pivot when at the pivot points when you need to pivot. But if you have an offense plan, those pivot points are much fewer and farther between. As long as the commitment piece is there from, from day one, if you got an offensive yeah. game plan, but only seven of the 11 players 
on offense are committed to actually moving the ball downfield, you're probably going to throw an interception, get picked off. Teams are going to score on you. So it starts yeah. with commitment. And I think that's a differentiating factor between younger and older men, just to tie everything we've talked yeah. about together. Because like, you know, if older men are, you know, middle age or whatever, they're in a relationship and their spouse makes them, they're not committed. They're just like, you know, so their brain, their mind is not committed at all. They might be going through the motions and they can do that for a long time. People will tell me, like, especially older gentlemen, middle age, like, you know, I can abstain for years. I'm like, I know, but here you are. So like, yeah. you haven't unwired the pattern. You haven't rewired the healthy pattern. That's what needs to happen. And then you you don't have to have your guard up because you're in a different spot. Plus your whole life's changed too, because you've created new behaviors. Yeah. Unfortunately, I feel... I feel those are the type of men that you see more and more like in your not knocking churches in any way. We've talked about the problems with, with the church and uh, you know, this issue in general, they're not, they're not addressing it in the way that I believe and and many of the men that we've had on here do, but you see those type of men in, in your men's church groups. I mean, I'm involved in a large group, you know, hundred plus men on a Tuesday night. And mm -hmm. they asked in the first week, like how many of you here because your wife told you you need to show up and like more than half the arms in the room went up and it's like, it was like a blow to my gut. It's like, oh, these men, they're just not going to get out of it. What I know they truly, truly need. So it's got to come yep. from, from your heart. You're wanting to change it for your brain, for your life to become your best version and truly live the life that you've created to live. So 